welcome to round two of the GMC tournament between your St. Joseph Falcons and the East Brunswick Bears. A uh, bit of a late start to the broadcast here. St. Joe's already off to a hot one nothing start uh, thanks to a goal by Max Roshwall. So just about 25 minutes left to go in the first half. Uh, I'm Ben Chowder, joined today by Paul Roach. And Paul, you'll be doing the rest of the first half with me. And you saw that, that Max goal better than I did. So could you just explain kind of what happened there to the viewers? Yeah, that's right. So I saw us get... Possession. Yes, that goal by Roshwell was very impressive. Now it's East Brunswick with the ball in Sancho's territory. And Sancho's has had multiple opportunities here today. Uh, the, Bra the Bears had one opportunity earlier, but Troy Boucher got there before anyone else. So right now it is all Falcons here in the first half. Yeah. I think you saw that earlier, Ben, about five minutes ago, we had very close to scoring a goal there. Yeah, there was a real opportunity there. For St. Joe's, that is missed. A shot here by East Brunswick it is punched out by Boucher instead of caught. So, interesting decision there, but nonetheless, Boucher ends up with the ball. Just 24 minutes left to go now in the first half. The lineup for St. Joe's today at the forwards is Chillac, Rashwal, and Algier. Gray and Christensen are at midfield alongside Adams and Shapiro, while Bilicek Sullivan are at defense. So Oldbridge with the free kick near midfield. Let's see what they can do here. It's a high and good one. That's going to go straight to Boucher. Boucher's going to punch it out. Still isn't catching it. And, Paul, I know you're not a avid soccer washer, but I, I feel like just like phys physically, it, it should be fairly easy to catch the ball when it's coming at you like that instead of having to punch it out. Yeah, right. I was – in the future, I hope to see more catching than punching here. Just in the last 20 minutes we've been watching the game, I've been seeing a lot of uh, – the punching that Ben's been talking about. We'll get a corner kick here for East Brunswick. Could be their first real opportunity of the day. Kick is up. And header by East wow. Brunswick near the net, still in the Bears' possession. Bicycle kick, and Boucher will Is get possession catch? of this one. Yeah, there's that catch we were talking about earlier. Head coach Terry McKibben for the Bears. Charlie Algier has an opportunity here. And the goalie will get there just in time. That's Brandon Silvera, the junior on East Brunswick. Yeah, like I was saying before, East Brunswick is seven and eight on the year compared to St. Joe's, who are seven and seven. So very similar teams uh, in the GMC. St. Joe's has a slightly better GMC record for in conference. They are six and six, while East Brunswick is five and seven. Once again, these are the four and five seeds, so it's really a toss up. But St. Joe's has a massive advantage with that first goal early on in the game. Adams here, pass to Chillock. Did you there for East Brunswick? He'll be on for the free kick. And Paul, I know you're on the uh, crew team, so do you want to give us a bit of a uh, kind of review of, of how the team is go doing so far? Yeah, sure. Um, well, I'd say 
for the start of the year this year. We're doing a lot better than last year. We've got some real promising candidates for our teams this year. I don't know if you guys know about this, but we got a uh, varsity, or sorry, we won nationals last year as a team. We're hoping to see a repeat of that this year. Yeah, and, and for anyone that might not know, nationals is that like, does that make you one of the best crew teams in it does. the U.S.? It does. Wow, that's We're impressive. Very excited about that. Are there any guys in specific, maybe some young guys or, or some guys in our class seniors that are that are really showing out so far this year? Uh, seniors, Tanner, uh, Tanner Tuvahar, he is very promising candidate. I expect him to be a D1 when he goes into college. Fastest guy on the team by far, long shot. Uh, his brother, Trent Tuvahar, I know he's in college rowing for Temple. He's a big deal out here in the crew world. We Great kick there. Uh, a lot of promise in our sophomore, James Hobish. He uh, walked on as a freshman and quickly became the second fastest kid on the team. Yeah, that's really impressive. Ridiculous. I feel like St. Joseph's got to gotta advertise and promote you guys more. They for, really uh, should. Winning nationals, and I mean, we're promoting a game we shouldn't even be pro promoting with the uh, British basketball game, but <laughs> we're not even promoting the crew team. So hopefully St. Joseph's can get on that. They're doing some real impressive stuff over there. That's right. John Carlos Gray now for the Falcons. Over to Adams, and Adams with a rough touch, handing the ball back over to East Brunswick. East Brunswick on the attack here. Boucher punches it out once again. Ooh. And it's in dangerous territory. Wow. And that is a penalty on Bilicek. Penalty kick here for the Bears. It's a bit confusing. Bilicek looked to be arguing with the ref, but now they're going to give a goal kick to St. Joe's. Paul, I don't know if you saw what what happened there, but what, what do you think the ref's call there was? I saw a piece of it down there. I just saw a kid laying on the ground. I hope the coach, uh, I hope the referee got what's right out of that. I think that was right. I think a penalty kick was uh, what needed to be done. Chilek on the attack gets it intercepted. East Brunswick now. Working his way past Shapiro. It's number 10, Joseph Carbone. Patino now. On the right wing for East Brunswick. That ball will travel into the hands of Boucher. Boucher has had a lot of possession of the ball here today, which is not something specifically you want if you're St. Joe's. Yeah, they're getting a little close to the goal there. See a little more defense out of these guys. Troy Boucher, his punt will go directly out of bounds, giving the ball back to the Bears. So St. Joe's dominated the first portion of the first half, but now in this second part of the of the first half, East Brunswick seems to be taking over and we could see a tie ball game very soon here. Patino defended by Adams and it'll be a foul on Bilicek. So free kick for East Brunswick. Free kick here for Ryan Berg, the junior. Looks like he'll cross it in here, and he will punched out by Boucher again, except this time it's a punch out that goes into the possession of St. Joe's. Ooh. But now it's right back to East Brunswick. Aditya. I see some defense here. Number five. Great defense there by Nazari Bilicek. And he couldn't save it. 
So that is Aditya Jam Jambunathan on the throw in for East Brunswick. I apologize for botching any names. Might just have to stick with Aditya for the rest of the game. And he's not even on the throw in, so there wasn't even a need for me to say that, but hey, it got out there. <laughs> Jeremy Wawa now on for the throw in. Wow, wow, with the throw in here. Ooh. Headed by Sullivan. That was a, a, a weird defensive play there by St. Joe's, but nonetheless, Boucher with the ball in his hands once again. Worked out. Fifteen minutes, or sixteen minutes, I should say, on the clock. Boucher, his punt intended for Chillock will be intercepted by the Bears. And looks like they're going to go a handball there on Patino. So hopefully St. Joe's can take it, take uh, take over this game like they did in those first 20 minutes. We'll have to see, though. Mindra, his first game back. Over to Roshwal, Max Roshwal. Crossing to Singh, Armin Singh. St. Joe's still in East Brunswick territory, and now it'll be cleared out by the Bears. St. Joe's maintaining possession. Mr. Neary with the defensive stop on the sideline for St. Joe's. John Bunathan gives the ball over to Gray. Gray working it on the outside left. And that'll be out of bounds on East Brunswick. 14 and a half minutes left to go in the first half. <coughs> And it'll be out of bounds once again on John Bunathan. Shapiro now for St. Joe's. Ball is knocked up into the air. And Christensen will knock it out of bounds. So goal kick. For Brandon Silvera. And the kick goes to about the 35 yard line where a free kick will be had. I believe it's a handball on Tim Sullivan. Brothers are taking their time on this free kick here. Kick is up and, and directly out. out of bounds. And a quick uh, update for any baseball fans out there. Yankees in Game 7 at Yankee Stadium. Game got delayed yesterday. And now in just the bottom of the first inning. Yankees are up 3-0 on the Guardians. John Carlos Stanton looks like he got a three-run homer, homer, and he did. So Stanton, Rizzo, and Torres got home for the Yanks. So off to a good start as they look to play the Houston Astros with a win here today. Twelve and a half minutes left to go now in the first half. <coughs> Throw in for the Bears once again in St. Joe's territory. They've become very comfortable here. And like I said before, it's only a matter of time, likely, before East Brunswick puts one into the back of the net. And, Paul, do you think it's more a struggle on the offensive side of the ball or the defensive side of the ball right now for why East Brunswick constantly has possession in St. Joe's territory? I think we're seeing a lot of struggle <clears throat> on the defensive side here. I think the ball, I think we need to move possession of the ball over to the Bears' side. We've seen too much of it over here on the right, Joe's side. It's very dangerous. Boucher is having pretty nice games so far, but likely won't keep up 
if they remain where they are. I know you were talking earlier, Boucher's been getting hold of the ball a lot here. That's generally not good for a goalie. Yeah, usually you, you want Boucher to be last resort. Yeah, you, you don't want him involved at all in the game That's as a as a uh, the best option, but he's touched the ball more than any other Sanchez player, I would say, at this point. That's right. We give him some flack here for punching out the ball, but he's been keeping him out of the goal, so Yeah, you gotta you gotta respect oh, it doesn't matter how he does it, as long as the goalie keeps that ball out of the net, who cares? The way he do he does it, so. That's right. East Brunswick on the attack here. Sullivan clears it out. Singh. The double long sleeves and the double gloves for Armin Singh. So we a throw in here for Nazari Bilicek. Backed up into St. Joe's territory. Be interesting to see how he plays this out. Vilicek's throwing over to Jakub Chilak, who will give it away to the Bears, who will then give it up to St. Joe's, who will then give it up to the Bears. So both teams just trading the ball off back and forth. We see that a lot in St. Joe's games. Jean Carlos Garay working it into East Brunswick territory, and the Bears are going to take over. Carbone over to Patino and out of bounds on East Brunswick. So both teams just kind of trading the ball back and forth. I don't really know what needs to happen here for someone to kind of just take over, but hopefully it happens soon. Singh, nice footwork there by the senior. Good through ball there by Armin Singh. Pass to Chilak. Chilak to Pogoshevsky. And they're going to call a offsides on Grant Bogoshevsky. A bit of a weird call. So it is Aditya Jambunathan Jr. for East Brunswick down on the field. Mr. Martin is checking him out, so we'll take a quick timeout and I'll be right back when the action continues. So after the injury timeout, it is a free kick here for East Brunswick after the offsides on Bogoshevsky. Mindra. The clearance right back to the East Brunswick defense. <coughs> Bilicek, nice move there by the junior. John Carlos Garay in a physical battle as Mindra launches this one out of bounds for the clearance. We'll go ahead straight over to Mr. Nolan. Shout out to Mr. Nolan, Mr. Rogan at pretty much every single San Jose sporting event, at least that I've been to so far. So you got to love the support as there isn't much from the San Jose students out here today for the soccer games. They're in the second round of the GMC playoffs, so hopefully we see some more if St. Joe's comes out with a win here today. Be a throw in for the Bears here.
Chillock. Over to Singh. Singh. Rough touch there by Armin. And it'll go out of bounds on the senior. So eight minutes left to go in the first half. Once again, St. Joe's still leads one to nothing over East Brunswick. Here in the second round of the GMC playoffs, the winner will likely play Oldbridge in the next round, which will be at Oldbridge, of course, if Oldbridge wins today. Chillac going to come off as Ethan Elizondo comes in, and, and Paul Elizondo is probably the most physical player on the Sancho's team. So how do you think that could sway the momentum as East Brunswick has had that kind of energy on their side just about for the entire game? I think seeing some push from our players could help bring the ball over to the Bears' side. As we've said before, we've seen a lot of action over on our side. We're trying to move that. Mindra. is down for the Falcons. Gets up on his own, but he's limping off to the sideline. So a lot of injured players. I know soccer players are no notorious for flopping, but at least a couple of the injuries today, it looks like have been legit. Paul, I don't know. If you, do you know if there's any, any tells to, to, to decipher between a, a, a flop and a player who is actually hurt in soccer? I'd say when the golf cart comes over and the player goes in the golf cart and gets driven away, I'd say that's a pretty telltale. So if you are not in a golf cart after you go down in soccer, you are not hurt. That's right. According to Paul Roach. I, I, I love that analysis right there. Scientific. <laughs> Elizondo, real chance here for Ethan Elizondo. And it is intercepted by East Brunswick and then intercepted by John Carlos Gray, which is then intercepted by East Brunswick and then intercepted by St. Joe's. <coughs> Falcons are constantly trading possession. I'm sure this isn't every high school game. Definitely a lot different from watching the uh, something like the World Cup, which we'll be seeing next month. Bogoshevsky gives it away to East Brunswick. Good through ball here by the Bears. Wow. Crossover is too powerful. Out of bounds on East Brunswick. So five and a half minutes left to go in the first half. Once again, St. Joe's leads 1-0 to zero here at the Brenner Family Field for the second round of the GMC playoffs. So goal kick for St. Joe's. Tim Sullivan, the senior, will take it for the Falcons. Vilicek over to Christensen, the sophomore. Bobby Christensen passes intercepted. Intended for Ward. Possible penalty there on Ward. Noah Nestor for his Brunswick maintains possession. Great slide tackle there by Gray. Wow. Singh. The pass over to Elizondo. Chance here for the Falcons. Ethan Elizondo, good footwork there by the senior. Gives it off to Armin Singh, and it's intercepted. <coughs> There's that physicality from Ethan Elizondo. There it is again. Two players are down on the field because of Ethan Elizondo, and he is still not stopping. So, yeah, Paul, that's what I was yeah. mentioning before. Ethan is definitely the most physical player on the team, and you just saw him run through two East Brunswick players, and they were both down on the ground. I think we're seeing a lot more physical from the St. Joe's side, and as you can see the result we've got over on the Bears. So as yeah. you want to be careful with being physical, I think it's gotten us closer to our goal here. Vilicek, the throw in, goes nowhere. And that will surely be a penalty on John Carlos Gray, and it will. And Paul, something interesting on that uh, Ethan Elizondo play before when two of those East Brunswick guys went down. They got up within, I would say, 
four or five seconds after holding their legs and seemingly in agonizing pain. So is that just that, that soccer kind of stereotypical flopping right there? It, it kind of looked like it was. Stereotypical soccer guys right there. You always see it. And that's at every level too. And that, that's kind of the biggest knock that people kind of have on soccer as a sport. And stuff like that doesn't help. But obviously Ethan Elizondo, very physical player. I would not like to be on the defensive side trying to play against him as he's barreling through defenders. Neither would I. So a very close free kick here for East Brunswick. At the 24-yard line. About 41 yards away from the net. Looked like it was a shot, but never really got up on <coughs> into the air. Ball is now flying in the air. Sullivan over to Elizondo. Good touch wow. there by Ethan Elizondo. And the ball stays in bounds. Ethan Elizondo over to Bogoshevsky. The pass was not accurate enough. But it will be out of bounds on East Brunswick unless a penalty is called on Bogoshevsky. And there will be a penalty call. Mm. So Bogoshevsky a little too physical down there trying to win the ball. And we'll get a free kick for the Bears. Throwing now for St. Joe's, minute 45 on the clock. And Paul, if you're St. Joe's, are you just kind of happy with the lead you have, or do you go ultra aggressive here? I say, as happy as I am with a 1 0 lead here, I think it, it'd be good to put some distance between us and them. I, I'm looking for a repeat of what happened uh, the soccer game a couple nights ago. Yeah, that was, that was intense in case anyone missed it. St. Joe's was down 1 0. <laughs> with four minutes left to go in the game. It was a goal by Elizondo to tie it up. And then Chillac, with three seconds left, scored the game winner, knocking it into the top of the net. And that is how St. Joe's got here in the first place. So definitely an eventful round one for St. Joe's, but I think they'd be a lot happier with a blowout win instead of having to go through that madness once again. Can't lie, though. It would be fun to be able to watch that up in the booth again. Minute 14 left to go. Free kick for St. Joe's. They'll likely just kind of pass the ball around to each other to end off the half. Not sure what the refs are pausing the game so long for. And now play will continue after a long pause. Ball is up for grabs as it seems to always be. No team ever has definite possession, but now Armin Singh does. Sing pass over to Ethan Elizondo. His pass intercepted. And that will be a penalty call on East Brunswick, or at least it should be. Jeremy Wawa is down for the Bears. Now Noah Nesser. It's not great footwork there by Nesser and... Wawa still on the ground after that Shapiro. Kind of kind of like they slide tackled each other, but Shapiro got right back up. But Wawa still on the ground. We have the uh, Telltale golf cart coming over here. Let's see what happens. There it is. Seems to be an actual injury 
on the field, according to Paul. So, yeah, we hope he's okay. We'll take another quick injury timeout and be right back for the 27 seconds left to go in the first half. So Bilicek now will essentially just punt it. It'll be intercepted by East Brundler, 20 seconds on the clock. Expecting nothing to happen here at the first half. Should be the score. But, hey, anything can happen. St. Joe's scored with four seconds left. Ten seconds on the clock. East Brunswick in possession. Good tackle there. Singh over to Elizondo. Elizondo has a little something going, but... Nonetheless, that is the end of the first half. St. Joe's leads East Brunswick one to nothing here in the second round of the GMC tournament, and we'll be right back for the commentary of the second half.
And we are back for the second half here at the Brenner Family Field. St. Joe's leads East Brunswick 1 to nothing here in the second round of the GMC playoffs. Once again, I'm Ben Shadow, joined by Paul Ooh. Roach. And Paul, St. Joe's kind of tapered off near the end of the first half. They had a lot of possession going East Brunswick way. Uh, East Brunswick was always in St. Joe's territory. So, so how, how do you think the Falcons can, can, can try and fix that, whether it's just scoring another goal to get more comfortable or, or having more possession time? I think that's really something we have to look at here, getting another uh, goal to get more confidence back. I think we saw in the first, I want to say, 20 minutes of game, we were real pushing there uh, after we scored our first goal. I think we need to see some more energy from that. Nice opportunity early there was Gray trying to cross it over to Rashwa, who got the one and only goal for St. Joe so far. Algier. This pass gets intercepted here by EB. And during the uh, last game, Paul, I know you weren't here, but for uh, for every corner kick, St. Joe's would put uh, Keegan Edmondson and Alejandro Ruiz, the two seniors, on, whether it was for defensive or offensive, just purely for their height. So do, do you think it would be a good idea to stick with that game plan here today, or, or do, you, do, do you like the way Coach Rocca is just keeping the starting lineup out there always? You know, I say, I say we do what's working for us. Uh, I think – Today, we're not leading by a large margin, but we're winning, right? So, yep. I don't see a problem with what we're doing here today. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Wise words there from Paul Roach. Sing. For St. Joe's, it'll be a penalty in St. Joe's' favor. So, free kick here for the Falcons. About three minutes in to the first half now. 36 minutes left to go in the game. Max Rushwall will get the penalty here. So another free kick for St. Joe's. So Gray or Chillock will take the free kick here. Quite far out, so gonna try and lob this one up. See if you can get a header in for a guy like Tim Sullivan, maybe. It was intended for Sullivan. Instead, it would be cleared out by the Bears. So, throw in for St. Joe's. Very close to that corner spot. Carlos Gray will come off the pitch. Giovanni Amore heads on for the Falcons. Throw in here to Chillac. Lobbed up and over. Max Rochewall got another shot off, goes nowhere. Saved by the keeper. Brandon Silvera. 
And it'll be a goal kick for the Bears. Algier kicks it back toward the defense. Charlie Algier once again for St. Joe's. So a lot of good, a lot of our guys falling over there. Yeah, St. Joe's definitely playing very physical. And the physicality got to Max Roshwell. Roshwell is down on the field. Got the golf cart. Fireman, he's ready. He's golf going. Golf cart is slowly revving up, and off goes Mr. Martin. And Mr. Yep, Martin kind of. I don't know if you saw that. Mr. Martin was kind of giving a look to uh, Coach Rucka as he was driving by, kind of like, we're really going to do this again. But of course, if Roshwell is hurt, you got to tend to him, and we'll take another break. And be back after this injury timeout. We are back after Roshwell was taken off by Mr. Martin. And a penalty will be called here on Amore. Free kick for the Bears. a good one Boucher on the floor and uh, what a catch there by Troy Boucher opted to punch out most of the shots earlier but good to see him going up there and grabbing that one and Paul I know you were avid on Boucher uh, trying to catch more shots than punch him out so it, it's good to see him go up and snag that one there before that was great to see there. You can tell he's been putting on some work. Amore. The shot will travel out of bounds. So a bit of an interesting call there by the refs. They're going to call a foul on Bilicek, giving a free kick to East Brunswick. St. Joe's parents are visibly unhappy about that one. They're yelling. They're also pleading for the ball to be placed on the 40-yard line. And the player will take the ball back to the 35-yard line. Parents still saying that is not the 40. Yeah, it doesn't matter anyway. They yeah, miss. the kid just free kicks the ball right out of bounds. And now the uh, 
Stands are starting to rock a little bit here at St. Joe's. Thought free kick was supposed to be free. <laughs> Brian Berg, the junior on the free kick there. Goal kick here by Bilicek. Ignacio knocks it up into the air. Free kick for East Brunswick. Hear the parents in the background here getting fired up. Yeah, it's good to see. It's good to see some energy here at the Brenner Family Field. Even if it's not from the students. Yeah, there's a, there's a little group of students. See guys like uh, like. Anthony Williams, Drury, Bellavia, Campanella. Those are some guys down there, but that's less than 10 kids. So hopefully we see more if St. Joe's keeps on winning. Shot here. That was good. By block. Vito Rapa is saved by Troy Boucher. Corner kick here for the Bears. Kick is up. East Brunswick gets the first touch, but it goes nowhere. It goes directly out of bounds. That's Ryan Berg on the header. And Chris Gentile has also joined the party here for St. Joe's. So there's there's no way the Falcons lose now. Ball travel out of bounds off of St. Joe's. And a quick update for the New York Yankees. Aaron Judge knocks in a homer for the Falcons. So 4-1 to one, New York leads at the bottom of the third. Sullivan will clear this one out of bounds. Check on defense. Nesser. The shot is intercepted by Tim Sullivan. Ooh. Good footwork there by Jakob Chillak. No foul called against East Brunswick. Parents clearly not happy about that one, but nonetheless, St. Joe's gets a, gets a throw in after the ball travels out of bounds. Daniel Shapiro, kind of just a time waster. Ball punted, but St. Joe's maintains possession. 26 minutes on the clock.
Armin Singh on the attack here. Ball travel out of bounds on East Brunswick. It's Christensen stretching out for St. Joe's. Could be seeing him a little bit later in the half. 25 minutes left to go. Aditya gives the ball away to Chillak. Jakob Chillak. This one goes up and over. Right over the fence. That one's out of bounds. So goal kick here for the Bears. Call a penalty on St. Joe's here. Not exactly sure what for. Boucher will haul in this one. Pretty easy save there for the for the sophomore. Still not sure what that penalty was for. Yeah, I, I heard I heard the ref say something about the hands, but not, I'm not sure what that means. It wasn't a handball, for sure. Sing. In hot pursuit here. Taken by the goalkeeper. And that'll be a penalty on St. Joe's. 23 and a half minutes left to go in the game. St. Joe's leads one to nothing. Once again, winner will likely move on to play East Brunswick or uh, Oldbridge. Free kick here for the Bears. It's a good one for East Brunswick. Ooh, dangerous header close. there. Very dangerous play for St. Joe's. Give me a goal kick for Bilicek. Armin Singh, this pass intended for Roshwall, intercepted by the Bears. Uh, 22 minutes left to go. Boucher once again in possession for St. Joe's. So that opportunity a couple minutes ago for East Brunswick was one of their only ones of the second half and really the game. So not sure how likely it is that they'll be able to put another one on the board to tie this game up before regular time ends. I think the closer we get to the end of the game here with nearly 20 minutes left, we're looking for more of a stall than an aggressive position. Most likely for St. Joe's and for East Brunswick, it'll get more and more aggressive as the time goes on. Jakob Chillak with the Meg there, but it is intercepted by the Bears. 
Max Rashwal. Opportunity here for Rashwal. And East Brunswick will get to it first. Free kick here. Christensen's header will make it over to Rashwal. And Paul, I believe your time is up here, so appreciate you having you on for the broadcast. Great analysis. So once again, that was senior Paul Roach on the broadcast. So I'll finish this one up here at the Brenner Family Field. About 20 minutes left to go in the game. So St. Joe's on a bit of an attack here. Pass is going to go to nobody. Both teams trading headers right now. Armin Singh. Opportunity for Singh. But it'll be an offsides. On the senior. Max Rushwa on a bit of a counterattack here for St. Joe's. Will likely be a penalty, but a play on by the refs. Decent through ball. Rushwa going to chase it down. Won't go anywhere. So out of bounds, goal kick for East Brunswick. Elizondo going to head on for Max Rushwall. teams kind of trading the ball back and forth like they have been all game in Sancho's territory at the moment. Jakob Chillak, counterattack here for Sancho's. Good footwork by the senior. Chillac over to Elizondo, and it'll be an offsides on Ethan Elizondo. Real opportunity there for St. Joe's. East Brunswick is going to have to try and replicate that. They don't have any chance. 
of tying this game up before regular time ends. 16 minutes left to go. It's a free kick here for Ryan Berg. It's a high and far one. Out of bounds. Goal kick for the Falcons. Armin Singh is going to come off as Giovanni Amore heads on for St. Joe's. Goal kick by the Falcons. Christensen advances the ball. Ball's picked up by Silvera. East Brunswick on the counter attack here. Throw in for the Bears. Maintaining possession is East Brunswick. Big crossing ball in. Sullivan will clear it out. And Gray, his touch will go out of bounds. Coach Rocker just telling the team to just calm down a little bit. Let things play out. There's no need to overdo it right now. You're enjoying a lead. Just keep it that way for the next 14 and a half minutes. Jakob Chilak, a couple good tackles there. East Brunswick still in possession. Aditya Jambunathan isn't able to get a foot on that ball. Throw in for St. Joe's. Kick here, Ethan Elizondo. Chance for Ethan Elizondo, and he couldn't get there fast enough. That was the game ender. That would have put this game to bed. But good to see St. Joe's still keeping that momentum going. East Brunswick has seemingly no chance right now with the way they're playing in the second half. Chilak. Jakob Chilak, and they are just holding his jersey the entire way. Aditya Jambunathan was tugging on his jersey. So, free kick for St. Joe's. John Carlos Gray can and will take his time here. Just got to chew that clock down. Gray, his kick is up, knocked up into the air. East Brunswick will take possession. Vito Rappa, the left back. Nice move there. Shapiro was kind of knocked into Samuel Negron. But nonetheless, it will be a penalty call on Shapiro. Free kick for East Brunswick. Ryan Berg. Clock is ticking. Berg is taking his time. His kick is up. 
bit of a falcon flock forming here now they were getting so loud that bird couldn't even hear the refs telling him where to place the ball so that wasted a lot of time for the falcons ryan berg pass over to jambunathan Nesser. Algier. Both teams training the ball back and forth. Ethan Elizondo now. Elizondo tried to flick it over top and outrun the defender, but just flicked it straight out of bounds. But still, that time is ticking. Ten and a half minutes left to go. Zari Bilicek. Not a Bogoshevsky. Grant Bogoshevsky ball is intercepted. Matos is in the game now for St. Joe's. Had a real opportunity if Bogoshevsky was able to get it over to him. Now here is Gabe Matos. His pass is a dangerous one, and it will be intercepted by Ace Brunswick. Going to be a yellow card for Daniel Shapiro. And Armin Singh will check on for Shapiro. Shapiro had a slide tackle. believe he got a decent amount of the ball, or maybe he didn't even get any ball. But nonetheless, refs saw what they saw, a yellow card for the senior. Crosses up for East Brunswick. Now a yellow card will be administered to Nazare Bilicek after that cross in. But it remains St. Joe's ball. I said it'll be Roger Ward getting the yellow card there for St. Joe's. Bilicek will be on for the goal kick, however. Roger Ward, good tackle there. Double team here by St. Joe's and Chillak in possession. Jakob Chillak. Good footwork by the senior. The Falcon flock is loving it. Gabe Matos with a chance here. And the goalkeeper gets there first. John Carlos Gray over to Jakob Chilak. Roger Ward puts his body on the line to deflect the ball. But it'll be out of bounds on Ward. Throw in for East Brunswick. Eight and a half minutes left to go in regular time. Sing. Header over to Matos. Good header over to Gabe Matos once again. Jakob Chilak now will be intercepted. Yeah, 
Charlie Algier, what a tackle there by the senior. Gave Matos. Dangerous pass back to the defense. It won't work out for him. Tim Sullivan got a little caught up with Joseph Carbone, and Carbone is letting the ref hear it, and the Falcon Flock are letting Carbone hear it. Gabe Matos will take in this goal kick. Not the greatest touch will be intercepted now by East Brunswick. Sullivan will clear it back into the Bears defense. Both teams trading the ball back and forth. Seven minutes on the clock. East Brunswick has seven minutes to try and put a goal on the board or else their hopes at a GMC title will be gone. Goal kick is up for the Falcons. Matos going to be in hot pursuit. Gabe Matos, good tackle there by the senior. Matos. Bit of push and shove going on there. Chillak. Ref will call a penalty on St. Joe's here. I wish I could try and figure out who he was trying to call it on. I, I thought there could be a penalty on uh, some of the defenders against Gabe Matos, but somehow it's a penalty on St. Joe's. The Falcons will get the ball back. And now the refs will let Gray and Elizondo head on the field for Gabe Matos and Gio Amore. Five or ten seconds onto the clock here. Pilicek throw in for St. Joe's. Jakob Chillak, and that will clearly be a penalty against East Brunswick. Free kick for the Falcons. John Carlos Gray, I believe, is going to get a yellow card here. So Ward will head on for the captain. Four minutes and 45 seconds left to go in the game. This ball is up in a dangerous area. It was likely off the hands of the goalie, and it will be corner kick for St. Joe's. Jakob Chillak on the corner for the Falcons. Keegan Edmondson. 
will head in the game. The height alone is very dangerous. And Armin Singh is going to try and keep him away from it. Chillak over to Mindra. Mindra with a shot. It is saved. And East Brunswick now will get something going here. Penalty called in favor of St. Joe's. Bilicek got tripped up. Free kick here for St. Joe's. Four minutes left on the clock. Falcons lead by a goal. Second round of the GMC playoffs. Crosses up. It is caught by Silvera. Jakob Chillak in hot pursuit. Chillak has played essentially the entire game, but showing no signs of exhaustion. Keegan Edmondson will be called for a penalty here. They're going to add five seconds on to the clock after that penalty. Ref is very serious about the time on the clock right now, adding five seconds, ten seconds at a time. We'll see if it can save East Brunswick in this game. Cross here for the Bears. And great defending there by Daniel Shapiro. It will be a corner kick, but if he was not there, that could have been the tying goal late in the second half. Cross in by East Brunswick. This header is going to sail over, and the Falcon flock is loving it. Ref will stop the clock once again. As St. Joe's gets set for this goal kick. And next time East Brunswick touches the ball, if they do touch the ball, again, will likely be their last opportunity to tie this game up. Elizondo, great physical play there. Ball is up in the air. Adams, great move there. Jakob Chillak. Chillak on the right wing. Jakob Chillak, the senior. Good footwork there by the captain. Maintaining possession, that's all. That is of importance right now for St. Joe's. Singh. This ball will travel out of bounds, but that clock will keep ticking. Two minutes and 15 seconds left to go for East Brunswick. Clearance here by the Bears. Singh. We'll get there first, and Armin Singh will just knock this one directly out of bounds. Just wasting that time. Great IQ there by Armin Singh. Nazari Bilicek. This one will go directly off of Charlie Algier. It's going out of bounds no matter what. Minute 40. Throw in here. And that will be a penalty on Adrian Mindra. It was quite a clear shove, if we are being honest. And it is in a dangerous territory for a free kick. Just outside of the penalty box, clock will stop at a minute and 25 seconds. Free kick will be at about the 10-yard line. So just about 20 yards away from that very dangerous territory. This may decide the game. Free 
kick is up. And it is saved by Boucher. Troy Boucher makes the save, but it's not over yet. Corner kick for Patino. Clock is ticking, minute 10. Patino taking his time. Kick is up. It's a low one, and it goes nowhere. We'll get another corner for the Bears. Kick here by Carbone now on the corner. Defended once again by Ethan Elizondo. 40 seconds on the clock. Throw in by Carbone. East Brunswick still in possession, but possibly not for long. Silvera. 20 seconds left to go for East Brunswick. This St. Joe's defense remains stout. Yet another throw in for the Bears. It's a high one. Near the net, Boucher is gonna fall to the ground and that will just about do it. Troy Boucher punts this one as high as he can. The Falcon flock rushes the field. St. Joe's is moving on in the GMC tournament. Falcons win one to nothing over the East Brunswick Bears knocking them out of contention. And that'll be it from the Brenner family field. Paul Roach was joining me earlier. I want to thank Paul for coming on. But other than that, I'm Ben Chadwick, and be sure to tune in for the next round of the GMC tournament.